Hey everyone, this is John Dickinson from motionworks.net back with a Cinema 4D tutorial for you. I've been working on this Beretta in my spare time, just hard surface modeling this, and it's coming along really nicely. I'm just up to creating these screws for the grip, and the screws look like this. They're a little bit different from regular screws. I guess you use an Allen key to, uh, to screw them in. I've got this kind of hexagonal shape, and it's, if I just zoom in here, kind of spherical and then it moves into this hexagonal shape and obviously connected to this cylindrical shape so I've had a bit of a play around and worked out a good way to create this so I thought I'd just record this and uh, you could take a look so I'll start off with a new document okay so the first thing I want to do is create a sphere just press NB so I can see my wireframe there and 24 segments is probably enough. I'm going to create a new null. Just name this spares. And I'm going to duplicate this and just hide that. Press C to make that editable. Point mode. We want to keep the bottom of this, so I'm just going to delete the top, just like that. And symmetry will definitely help us here. So I'll put it in symmetry early. Polygon mode. I want to keep four of these. UI to invert the selection and delete. Just drag a copy of that into my spares. It's always good to have lots of steps to go back to, just in case. I just want to see my world axis. Okay, so now I want to put that into an array. So with the sphere selected, holding down the Alt key and choosing Array. Now I haven't got my default settings set up, but what I need to do is set that radius to zero. And copies are one five. And I can come up here and choose set as default. So these settings will always be my default from now. Okay, so once again, it's going to create a copy of that. Grab my knife tool. Uh, in point mode and just drag across and you can see by doing that in top mode I get this curved cut and that's really important for this uh, this hexagonal sort of bolt or screw shape now notice just get out of that tool by pressing the spacebar notice we've also created a triangle here so it probably will help just to make that into a quad Polygon pen tool, hold down control to dissolve that. To the other side. Dissolve. I want to make sure these are right on top of each other. I'm using HP modeling tools. I'm just going to click on vertex snap. Can't recommend HP modeling tools enough they're so useful just make uh, modeling so much faster don't have to uh, do as many clicks as you would without the tools okay we can probably get rid of this top row I'll just save this Just select that in loop mode and delete. I think that's going to be enough. You can see from the uh, reference here, we haven't got uh, that much distance between this point and the edge here. 
I think if we cut that extra loop in, it'd be too much. Okay, so now I'm going to select these. And hold down control and just pull that down, probably about that far. Just get rid of these extra polygons. Okay. Looking good. Now, if I was to drop that into a subdivision surface, you can see nothing's connected. So we'll drop it into a connect object first. Just like that. Looking good. So now we need to do some control cuts just to sharpen this up. Just press Q to turn off that connect and just turn off the subdivision surface. Just turn off the array as well. And this is why you want to work in arrays when you're doing anything like this. So we can do the minimal amount of work. I'm going to press Alt 3. Alt 3 is one of the uh, shortcuts for HP modeling tools. It allows me to select the object more easily. I use it all the time. These selection tools for HP modeling tools are unbelievable, especially when you have a lot of objects in your scene. Edge mode. We can probably do this either using the knife or we could just do solid a solid bevel. So I'm going to just grab my move tool, select this and select this. MS for bevel. I'm already in solid mode. Don't need limit turned on. Right about there. Turn that back on. Okay, not looking too bad. I've got my subdivision surface set to uh, one and one. I'm just going to turn that up. Okay, that's looking better. You can see we've got some problems down here. That's okay, I can sort that out. I'm actually going to get rid of that uh, in a moment. So, do we have enough curvature here? We've only got one row of polygons here. You see, it doesn't really curve. You can see this looks like it has more curvature in there. So I'm going to add an extra loop in there. First of all, just save this. Okay, so KL. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. You could slide an edge out and use preserved curvature, but you can also uh, use the knife tool in loop mode. And you can see there's a shaping option here. So if I turn on preserved curvature, tension of one probably won't give me quite enough. So I might make that maybe two. You can see when I drag over here, we get a little green representation of what the curve's going to look like. So I might just click in the middle there and you can see that's added that curvature in there. That's probably enough. Just gives us a little bit of extra curvature, which is nice. UB, just select those edges. And I want uh, Got a little less room here. I want um, edge cut. Click and drag a couple of times. Okay, so how's this looking? Starting to get some issues with the connect object. It's causing some problems. I think it's because we put that extra cut in there. 
and that's causing that to um, be not quite straight. See that sort of bulging that out a little bit. So I could just go into point mode. And just shift this across a little bit like that still got the problem in the middle here could grab that and see if I shift it around a bit it's pretty hit and miss doing it that way I think I'll give that a miss now I'm gonna clean up these triangles in a moment I could add the main body of the screw just while I'm still in the array, no problem. Just to show you um, by way of example, I could you know, take that edge and you can see here that uh, if I control drag that out now, it's not going to give me the result that I want. What I want to do is just go into uh, uh, axis snap mode, just hold down the L key and let go just to toggle into axis mode and then out. And that's going to put my axis right in the middle. Now I can scale with control and that's going to scale that out. But you can see it's also scaling it up. So what I want to do is just turn off the, uh, the Y axis and I can scale that out. So I can do all of my scaling while I'm still in this mode. Or of course I can collapse this down and um, do it to the object as a whole. I'm going to actually just do it to the object as a whole because I need to clean up this, this mess in here as well. So I'll just save this, control drag, and just going to press C on my connect object. Let's bring that out for now. Okay, so, so we'll just drop that back in there. I want to see what kind of problems I have. They're not looking too bad. So I think what I'll do first is just clean up this bottom bit. Now there's a few ways to do this and I wouldn't really want to try it without HB modeling tools. I could just go into polygon mode and just select these polygons. Just make sure this is selected. Once again, using the HB select tool. I could just select those and I could use um, HB make quads and that would make that quads but watch what happens when I turn that uh, subdivision surface on and just do a quick render you can see I've got a flat surface there so there's a little bit more work that's required you just definitely don't want to have these issues here I mean I know I've got a problem with the connect uh, not quite working but even if I didn't have that you've still got this pinching in here and that's not a good look Unless you're creating some kind of balloon, I guess. So what I want to do is give myself a little bit more geometry, and then I can use the, uh, the Make Quad script from HP Modeling Tools. So I'll go into Edge Mode. Now this time I'm going to use the Slide Tool, MO. Uh, I have Preserve Curvature turned on. And just Control Drag out and give myself an extra edge there. You can see I've got nice curvature in that. I don't need one up here. Double click. And I'm really not liking how, since the R20 upgrade, the, uh, the slide tool can go a little bit crazy sometimes. I thought that was a bug that had been fixed, but it doesn't seem to have been fixed yet. Okay, you can see by double clicking it, I'm not selecting that entire loop. So there's some issues there. So what I can do is just select everything and just optimize that and see if that helps. Yeah, there we go. Now we're still not quite there yet. Let's see. If I just turn on that subdivision surface. Yeah, we've still got an issue. So what I might do is just come into Optimize and just increase that. 
maybe make it point five. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's not a problem anymore. Just be really careful when you optimize. I don't know how many times I've optimized and I've been working at a quite a small scale and optimizing had stitched a bunch of uh, points in other areas of my model together and I haven't discovered it until later. And that's why I definitely keep lots of different versions of my models. Just be very, very careful when you, uh, when you optimize. Okay, so once again, slide mode, the slide tool, and just gonna bring out some more. That looks to have a problem there, let's see. You see, this is really frustrating. There we go. Take that one. What we're trying to do is make this much more curved rather than down to a point here. Just bring that back a bit. Now, you might be thinking, well, why didn't you just work with a sphere uh, with more resolution? Well, I could have done that, but it's always a trade-off. Um, if I'd have done that, then I would have had more polygons to deal with up until this very point. But I knew that um, I would be able to add a few loops in later if I needed. I'd rather work at lowest, as low as possible um, and then add more resolution. But it really depends on what you're doing. You have to think about what you're doing first. And sometimes it takes a little bit of practice and maybe a bit of trial and error before you find the, um, the best way for the particular model that you're you're creating so that's such a such a pain okay so once again drag that back this is really annoying now so that's still not connected so there's still an issue there I, let's just find out which uh it's that one there right okay so it's that one so what i'll do is i'll just select those MQ and world and see if that does it. There we go. And again, you can see we're getting more curvature in there. Maybe one more. Still got some problems in the middle there. That one there. Be careful I haven't selected something up above. Get rid of that. Uh, I think that got it. Seems to be something in there too. I can see that in the phone. There we go. I've got to get that middle one in there too. Okay, that should sort that out. I think we just need a couple more in here. There. And one more should do it. So that's pretty flat now. So what I can do, if you just preview that, it's still got a couple of issues. There we go, let's fix that. So it's still got the pinching, which is what I expected. It's much better because we've rounded that out. But if you really want to fix this, I want to select that and I'll just use um, HB make quads, just turn it into quads. And what I can also do is press UY just to grow the selection a few times. Like that. And I can use HB Relax, but uh, since version 2.3 of HB Modeling Tools, you've now got a preserved shape option. You can see here when I scroll over, when I roll over the tool, 
that control, holding down control when using this script will preserve the shape. If I don't do that, it's going to give me that kind of shape. Undo. But if I hold down control, it's going to preserve the shape and it's going to just relax all of those polygons. Just like that. Isn't that beautiful? Select everything. You are to reverse the normals. Q. Okay, looking good. I think we've still got some problems, slight problems with the joins. I'll just check the fong angle of this. It's only on 40, I'll put it on 80. Yeah, we still do. Okay, so. I'll just put it back into subdivision surface, just turn off uh, lines. Okay, so I had to turn off use edge breaks. Because everything looked optimized. Didn't seem to be any holes or gaps. You see you've got a nice rounded spherical shape there. Or a nice, uh, nice smooth sphere without that pinching, which is beautiful. I know this is the inside of a screw that you're only going to see probably maximum this size, but it's really good to know how to do that. Okay, so now I can go ahead and just do the rest of the, um, of the shape. I'm not going to do the actual thread for this because I'm never going to be seen in the model. So T, actually I'll just put a, just put a, a cut, loop cut just in here. I might want to put these slightly further away, otherwise you'll never see the bevels because they'll be so small. T, it's fine. that loop but um, just put it in there for now okay so I could just select these edges mm just to connect those something like that it's looking nice and even Obviously, that's um, in reverse. That's actually quite a good little um, little bolt shape there, or dome-shaped hexagonal bolt, which is really handy. Obviously, you wouldn't have that um, that spherical shape at the bottom. And we'll see it from about there. Looking good. Those kind of details really help. Okay. So apart from a few little issues we had with um, 
that knife cut messing up our um, connections, um, you can see it's pretty straightforward. So hopefully you found that useful. For now, this is John from motionworks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.